Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India this session on encephalitis. Now, encephalitis is an inflammatory process which involves brain parenchyma and associated due neurological dysfunction which may be due to infectious causes or sometimes may be due to non-infectious causes. Now, encephalitis is a major health problem worldwide due to its very high mortality. The objective for these sessions are like this. At the end of the session, you will be able to define encephalitis, acute encephalitis syndrome and terms associated with it. You will be able to describe etiology, pathogenesis and pathology of encephalitis. You will be able to describe clinical manifestations, epidemiology, laboratory diagnosis and prevention of encephalitis. Now, let us begin this session with a case scenario pertaining to encephalitis. A 20 year old male was presented with generalized headache, fever and altered sensorium for 4 days. On admission, he was febrile with a temperature of 101 degree Fahrenheit, pulse of 130 per minute, blood pressure was 90 by 60 and there were signs of respiratory distress. On physical examination, there was neck stiffness and Kernick's sign was positive. Two days later, this patient developed flaccid paralysis in all the limbs. On the basis of these findings, acute encephalitis syndrome was provisionally diagnosed and supportive treatment was initiated. Brain computed tomography did not show any evidence of intracranial hemorrhage or cerebral edema or there was no abnormal mass effect. The CSF routine analysis showed pleocytosis with lymphocyte predominance. The CSF glucose level was 65 mg per dl and the protein level was 118 mg per dl. The microscopic examination and culture of CSF was negative for bacteria, fungus and parasite. So, on the basis of these findings, herpes simplex virus encephalitis was suspected and antiviral treatment was initiated. However, the CSF HSP antibody test both for IgG as well as IgM was negative and the patient did not respond to the empirical antiviral treatment. Also, antibody test for dengue virus and chikungunya virus were negative. Finally, Japanese encephalitis was diagnosed on the basis of presence of Japanese encephalitis virus antibodies both in serum as well as in CSA. In spite of the intensive care, the patient died 3 days after the diagnosis was made. Somewhat this type of scenario is observed with a case of encephalitis caused by Japanese encephalitis virus infection which is very common in some part of India. So, let us see how these terms are defined. So, encephalitis is inflammation of brain parenchyma with laboratory and clinical evidence of neurological dysfunction. Myelitis is described as or defined as inflammation of spinal cord whereas, meningitis is inflammation of meninges. Now, there is a considerable overlapping in causation and manifestation of these entities and hence compounded terms like encephalomeningitis, meningoencephalitis, meningomyelitis and encephalomyelitis are commonly used. It is important to differentiate encephalopathy from encephalitis. Encephalopathy is a disruption of brain function that is not related to a direct structural or inflammatory process involving brain parenchyma. So, 
usually it is not associated with fever, there is no CSF pleocytosis and there is no evidence of infection of central nervous system. Because there is considerable overlap in the manifestation of encephalitis, meningitis and meningoencephalitis, a term which encompasses all these three entities that is acute encephalitis syndrome is commonly used. World Health Organization defines acute encephalitis syndrome like this. A person of any age presenting at any time of year with an acute onset of fever and a change in mental status like disorientation, irritability, somnolence or coma and a new onset of seizures which are not associated or which are not febrile seizures. So, let us see the etiology of acute encephalitis syndrome. Overall, viruses are the most important cause of acute encephalitis syndrome and among viruses, RNA viruses are most important causes worldwide. Now, in RNA viruses, arboviruses that is arthrobot bone viruses are very important cause of acute encephalitis syndrome. These viruses, they are enveloped RNA viruses which belong to different families. So, the viruses belonging to Flaviviridae family that is Japanese encephalitis virus, West Nile virus, St. Louis encephalitis virus, Murray Valley encephalitis virus, tick-borne complex viruses and dengue virus are the important causes of encephalitis which belong to Flaviviridae family. The other families and the viruses are Togaviridae family and Buniaviridae family. In Toga viridae family, the viruses belonging to genus alpha virus that is western equine encephalitis virus and eastern and Venezuelan equine encephalitis viruses also chikungunya virus are the important causes of acute encephalitis syndrome. Rubella virus also belongs to Toga viridae family and again sometimes it causes sporadic acute encephalitis syndrome. Lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus, it is not an arbovirus, it is a virus which belongs to arena viridae and it causes aseptic meningitis or meningoencephalitis in immunocompromised patient and it is a rodent borne encephalitis virus. The other RNA viruses which cause acute encephalitis syndrome include the viruses which belongs to paramyxoviridae family like measles, mumps, nipah and hendra virus. Sometimes influenza which is orthomyxoviridae virus, it also sometimes causes encephalitis. Rabies and chandipura virus which belong to rhabdoviridae family, they are also known to cause acute, acute encephalitis syndrome. HIV virus of a retroviridae family is known to involve blood brain parenchyma. The viruses belonging to Picorna viridae family like polio virus, eco virus, enteroviruses 70 and 71 and Coxsackie virus are also associated with encephalitis. The DNA viruses which cause acute encephalitis are the viruses belonging to a herpes viridae family. The most important is herpes virus that is herpes simplex virus 1 and 2 and cytomegalovirus, varicella zoster virus and human herpes virus 6, they also cause acute encephalitis. The other DNA viruses which are involved in causation of encephalitis are parvovirus B4 and adenovirus. Besides viruses, there are other agents, agents other than viral causes which are also involved in acute encephalitis syndrome. So, the bacteria which cause meningitis like Neisseria meningitis, H. influenzae, Streptococcus pneumoniae, sometimes Brucella, Salmonella and Listeria monocytogens, they are sometimes cause of encephalitis. Then spirochetes like Triponema pallidum, Leptospira species and Borrelia burgdorferi are also involved. Rickettsiae like Rickettsia typhi and scrub typhus agent that is Orientia susugamushi are also involved. Other bacteria like Mycoplasma pneumoniae and Mycobacterium tuberculosis are also cause of 
acute encephalitis. The important fungi which cause encephalitis are Cryptococcus neoformans, Mucor species and Candida species. Negleria, Acanthamoeba, Balamuthia mandrillaris are the important protozoan parasites. Besides this, Toxoplasma gondii, Plasmodium falciparum, Trypanosoma species and Cysticercus cellulosi are the parasites which cause encephalitis syndrome. Now globally the acute encephalitis syndrome is seen in two different forms. One is in the form of outbreaks. The outbreaks are most commonly caused by herboviruses. So, flaviviruses and alpha viruses will belonging to these herboviruses group are very important cause of outbreaks in many parts of the world. The other viruses which are responsible for outbreaks of encephalitis include paramyxoviruses like Nipah virus. Besides this some viruses like Chandipura virus belonging to Rhabdoviridae family is also known to cause outbreaks. The other form of presentation of acute encephalitis is in the form of sporadic cases. Now her herpes viruses they are responsible or they are known to cause acute sp uh, sporadic encephalitis all over the world. Enteroviruses they are also responsible for sporadic cases of encephalitis. In the third form the encephalitis is form found in immunocompromised patient. So, cytomegalovirus, toxoplasma, lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus, JC virus, acanthamoeba and cryptococcus neoformans they are known to cause encephalitis in immunocompromised individuals. So, different viruses they cause encephalitis outbreaks in different regions in the world. For example, Japanese encephalitis virus which is a flavivirus that is mosquito borne flavivirus, it is known to cause outbreaks of encephalitis in China, in Southeast and South Asia. Other flavivirus that is West Nile virus, it is known to cause infection in Africa, in the Central Asia, some part of India, also in Australia and it is also an important uh, cause of outbreaks of encephalitis in USA. Other flaviviruses like tick-borne encephalitis viruses where the flaviviruses which are evolved to use ticks as a vector because ticks are abundant in these regions are seen in North Asia and North Europe. So, Russian spring summer encephalitis which is tick-borne encephalitis, it is found in the eastern part of former uh, USSR and also in uh, the western uh, tick-borne encephalitis is found in United Kingdom. The alpha viruses of uh, Toga viridae that is Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus, eastern equine encephalitis and western equine encephalitis they are found in Americas. So, the different viruses they are known to cause outbreaks in the different part of the world. Now, coming to pathophysiology of encephalitis. The initial site of involvement of body it depends upon the type of virus. So, the viruses uh, like uh, enteroviruses or poliovirus they enter via GI tract. Some viruses like paramyxoviruses they enter through res respiratory tract, herpes viruses they enter via genital tract whereas herboviruses they enter the body via skin. After entry there is a brief multiplication of virus in the region occurs in the regional lymph node and then via lymphatics they subsequently enter the blood to cause primary viremia. After primary viremia the virus get uh, seeded in the organs of reticular endothelial system and other organs where multiplication takes place and subsequently there is secondary viremia and through blood in many cases the virus enter the CNS. 
so the spread of virus to the CNS in most of the cases it is via hematogenous dissemination. So, it is especially seen in case of arboviruses. The other way by which virus spread to CNS is by retrograde neuronal dissemination. So, this, this type of spread to CNS is seen in case of herpes simplex viruses and polio virus. In some cases, there is direct extension of virus from the area anatomically adjacent to brain. So, this type of uh, CNS invasion is seen in case of fungi. So, because of the involvement of brain parenchyma, the various pathological changes are seen which are in the form of cerebral edema, congestion, there may be small hemorrhages, perivascular cuffing of lymphocytes, there are signs of involvement of le leptomeninges. So, there is leptomeningitis, demyelination and neuronal involvement in the form of destruction in the form of chromatolysis and neuronophagia. Because of these pathological changes, the parenchymal edema, it causes changes in the state of consciousness. If there is involvement of brain stain neurons that can result in coma or respiratory failure and neuronal involvement results in seizure activity. So, usually encephalitis it starts as an episode of acute onset of febrile illness which follows a prodromal period. There may be extra neural features depending upon the primary infection. For example, in case of herpes simplex virus, there may be uh, history of presence of genital lesions. There are signs and symptoms of involvement of leptomeninges. So, signs and symptoms of leptomeningeal irritation. There are usually focal neurological signs and there is a, there, is, there are uh, neuronal involvement which results in seizures alteration of consciousness and there may be behavior or speech disturbances. Now, let us see the etiology of acute encephalitis syndrome in India. Now, again in India, the viruses are the predominant cause of acute encephalitis syndrome. In viruses, Japanese encephalitis virus, West Nile virus are the important causes of outbreak enteroviruses and herpes simplex viruses, they are responsible for the sporadic cases. Nipah virus, Chandipura virus, again they are responsible, they are known to cause small outbreaks and the other viruses which are involved in the etiology of acute en encephalitis syndrome in India are dengue virus, chikungunya, measles and mumps virus. The other causes are Plasmodium falciparum, bacteria causing meningitis, mycobacterium tuberculosis, leptospira, orientia susugamoshi and cryptococcus neoformans. So, these etiological agents they are mainly found to be responsible for acute encephalitis syndrome in India. Now, coming to Japanese encephalitis because it is a leading cause of encephalitis in India in many parts of India. It is seen that in Japanese encephalitis the cases are much less compared to subclinical infection. So, for each case of clinical case of Japanese encephalitis there may be 500 to 1000 asymptomatic cases. It is seen that nearly 50,000 cases of Japanese encephalitis occur globally and nearly 10,000 deaths occur due to Japanese encephalitis. This disease was first discovered in Japan in 1871. At that time it was known as Japanese B encephalitis to distinguish it from the encephalitis lethargica which was common at that time and which was caused by Japanese a encephalitis virus, but now the B has been dropped and it is commonly known as Japanese encephalitis virus. Japanese encephalitis is basically a zoonotic disease and it infects man only incidentally. It is endemic in southeast Asian region, so it is seen in the neighboring countries to India and other countries like uh, southeast countries like Malaysia, Thailand and Vietnam. 
in India. The disease was first reported in 1955 in Tamil Nadu. The maximum cases are reported in Uttar Pradesh and Assam. The disease is seen to be endemic in 15 states and union territories. Now, it, this disease is primarily or principally it occurs in rural agricultural location where flooding irrigation is practiced and majority of cases are seen to occur in children, especially in children below 15 years of age. Less than 10 percent of the cases are seen to occur in uh, age group above 60 years. The Japanese encephalitis virus is a flavivirus. It is an RNA virus. It is enveloped virus with icosahedral capsid. It is about 50 nanometer in size. The genome is linear. It is positive sense RNA which is non-segmented. Five genotypes are known to occur in Asia. The major genotypes they are present in different geographical areas, but all these genotypes they are serologically same and they are also similar in their virulence. The natural cycle of Japanese B encephalitis virus it involves transmission between birds that is ardid bug birds and pigs. Ardid birds are the birds with long legs and necks. Now, they are responsible for the maintenance of virus and also amplification of virus and they are also responsible for transmission of this virus to the distant regions. So, the basic cycle of transmission occurs between pigs, mosquito and pigs and ardid birds and uh, mosquito and ardid birds. So, the birds like herons, Egrets, they are commonly involved, and besides this, mosquito, uh, besides this, sparrows and some other birds like ducks are also involved in basic cycle of the transmission. Pigs are the major vertebrate host which are involved in the transmission cycle of Japanese B encephalitis. Now, pigs after infection they remain asymptomatic, and that is why they are known as amplifier host. A very high viremia occurs in pigs that is why they are responsible for the infection of the mosquitoes and hence they are known as amplifier host. Besides pigs other animals are also infected like cattle and buffaloes, but high viremia does not occur in cattle and buffaloes and hence they are not involved in the natural transmission cycle. They work as mosquito attractants, but they, they are not uh, the natural host for Japanese B encephalitis virus. Horses are the only animals which are affected by Japanese encephalitis virus and which shows symptoms of encephalitis. In the cycle of Japanese encephalitis virus, humans are only incidentally affected or infected. So, man is the dead end host for Japanese encephalitis virus. Because very high viremia does not occur, the mosquitoes feeding on humans do not get infected. So, they are not involved in the natural cycle, but man acts as a dead end host and also man to man transmission is not reported. Now, the mosquitoes belonging to Culex genus that is Culex tritinorhynchus and Culex vishnui, they are incriminated in transmission of Japanese encephalitis virus. These mosquitoes they breed in irrigated rice fields where stagnation of water occurs in rice paddy fields. After feeding on a highly viremic host the mosquito get infected and for the development of virus it takes about 9 to 12 days. So, after an extensive incubation period of 9 to 12 days the mosquito becomes infective to man. Now, coming to clinical course of Japanese encephalitis. So, the incubation period of Japanese encephalitis is about 6 to 16 days. After a variable period of prodrome, the initial presentation is in the form of high grade nonspecific fever and associated symptoms of flu like illness like headache or body ache which is associated with nausea, anorexia vomiting and abdominal pain. 
subsequently there is development of symptoms related to central nervous system. So, which are in the form of irritability, agitation, there may be personality changes, seizures, there are movement disorders and the characteristic feature that is there, there may be presence of Parkinsonian manifestations. There may be cranial nerve palsies and upper motor neuron paralysis is common especially affecting upper limb. In 70 percent of the survivors sequelae of Japanese encephalitis are seen and they are in the form of Parkinsonism, spastic paralysis, mental retardation and psychiatric complaints. The other flavivirus infection which is known to cause outbreaks all over the world is West Nile virus. A West Nile virus is again a single stranded positive sense RNA virus which is transmitted by Culus mosquito among wild birds. The disease was first reported in West Nile province from Uganda. It is known to occur in countries belonging to Africa, Middle East, parts of Asia, Australia and again it is an important cause of outbreaks of encephalitis in North America. West Nile, vi West Nile virus infection is usually a mild non-fatal illness in human. However, occasionally it may be associated with encephalitis. The infection has all been reported from many parts of India like uh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan. Another virus which causes outbreaks of encephalitis in India is Chandipura virus. Now, this virus it belongs to Rhabdoviridae. It is transmitted by sand fly. Children are most commonly affected by this virus. It was first reported from Chandipur village near Nagpur district in Maharashtra state and hence it is known as Chandipura virus. So, from Maharashtra state Andhra Pradesh and Gujarat outbreaks and sporadic cases of Chandipura virus encephalitis have been reported. Another virus causing outbreaks of encephalitis in India is Nipah virus. So, Nipah virus it was first discovered in 1999 in Sungai Nipah in Malaysia. This virus belongs to genus Henipah virus of Paramyxoviridae family. So, it is a paramyxovirus. So, it is a single stranded enveloped RNA virus. Fruit bats of genus Steropus are the natural reservoirs of uh, Nipah virus. Now, these infected bats they remain symptomless. However, the virus is excreted in the secretions and excretions of these bats. So, it is present in the saliva, urine and semen and excreta of the infected bats. Nipah virus is highly uh, pathogenic to pigs. So, it is highly contagious among pigs and these pigs after infection with Nipah virus they become symptomatic and they spread virus by coughing. So, the human they get infected when they come in contact with these infected pigs. So, infection in human beings commonly occurs by exposure to sick pigs, bat, infected bats and also drinking raw dead palm sap which is contaminated by the infected bats. In case of Nipah virus infection, human to human transmission has also been reported. A very high case fata uh, fatality rate is reported in Nipah virus encephalitis. So, case fatality rate it may range from 9 to 75 percent. It is reported from many Southeast Asian countries especially Malaysia and India. So, Nipah virus encephalitis was reported first in 2001 in India from Siliguri, West Bengal. During this outbreak 66 cases were reported and the case fatality rate was more than 70 percent. The second outbreak occurred in 2007 in Nadia district in West Bengal when 30 cases of uh, Nipah virus encephalitis occurred and the mortality was observed in 5 cases. 
Recently, an outbreak occurred in Kazikode, Kerala in 2018. Now, coming to the sporadic cases of encephalitis, now herpes simplex virus is the most important causes of sporadic encephalitis all over the world. So, it is one of the most common causes of acute focal encephalitis. So, herpes simplex virus involvement of brain results in acute inflammation, congestion or hemorrhaging. It can present with a personality changes, confusion and disorientation which is also commonly seen with Japanese encephalitis virus infection. Seizures and focal neurological defi deficits such as hemiparesis, hemiparesis is commonly seen. Because this uh, virus uh, infection can be treated successfully with antiviral therapy, the prognosis is related to the immediate diagnosis and antiviral treatment. The other viruses which cause sporadic encephalitis include polio and enteroviruses. So, encephalitis is not a very common form of poliomyelitis, it is quite an uncommon form of poliomyelitis. It principally, this form is principally seen in infants, it is characterized by disturbances of consciousness. It is the only type of poliomyelitis in which seizures are seen. There may be upper neuron involvement resulting in spastic paralysis. Enterovirus 70 and 71 are also involved in acute encephalitis syndrome in India. Other enteroviruses like ecoviruses and pericoviruses are also sometimes causes of acute encephalitis syndrome in India. Now, the scrub typhus which is caused by rickettsial pathogen Orientia susugamushi is also associated sometimes with encephalitis. This infection scrub typhus is transmitted by species of trombiculid mites. So, the typical features of scrub typhus encephalitis include morbilliform rash, ishar, splenomegaly and lymphadenopathies along with the neurological signs and symptoms. So, usually in scrub typhus encephalitis, encephalitis is seen in the late phase of the illness. Scrub typhus uh, uh, is seen in many parts of India, especially in the northern states like Bihar. Now, coming to laboratory diagnosis of encephalitis. Now, the laboratory diagnosis of encephalitis could be very challenging. This may be because there are large number of etiological agents are involved in the causation of encephalitis. So, it is very difficult to identify or to test for all the agents. However, the laboratory diagnosis of encephalitis is important because specific treatment is available if it is caused by bacterial agents or fungal or protozoal agent. For most of the viruses, uh, causing encephalitis, specific treatment is not available, but for herpes simplex virus encephalitis, specific treatment is available. And also for the management and control of the outbreaks of encephalitis, it is important that laboratory diagnosis of encephalitis is performed in all the cases of encephalitis. The various specimens collected for laboratory diagnosis include cerebrospinal fluid, blood, serum, and various other specimens. So, CSF is collected by lumbar puncture. It is stored at 2 to 8 degree centigrade for immediate testing and if the delay is to occur, then it is to, it has to be stored at minus 20 or minus 80 degree centigrade. For bacteriological workup, however, CSM must not be refrigerated. For isolation of viruses, blood is collected within 4 days of onset of the uh, disease. Serum is collected for detection of antibodies. So, for detection of IgM antibodies, serum is collected after 5 days of the onset. For detection of IgG, uh, paired sera are collected one sample at the time of acute illness and second during convalescence. 
The other specimens use, which are useful for the laboratory diagnosis are nasopharyngeal or throat swabs, especially in case of paramyxoviruses, rectal swabs like enteroviruses, stool, urine and brain biopsy for isolation of virus. So, for laboratory diagnosis the various tests performed are like this. First the biochemical analysis of CSF is carried out. Besides this uh, the other biochemical test like uh, uh, liver function test and renal function test are also done to rule out encephalopathy. Peripheral blood smear is uh, examined for the presence of um, protozoan parasites. CSF examination is carried out by gram stain, India ink, gymsa staining, acid fast staining and wet bound preparation for the presence of bacteria, fungi and parasites. CSF culture is done for bacterial and fungal pathogens. Then IgM antibody is detected in serum as well as in CSF to a specific virus. Fourfold difference in IgG antibody titer in paired sera can be used for laboratory diagnosis. The antigen detection is done for bacterial and fungal pathogens. Virus isolation can be carried out from the tissue obtained from the brain. Antigen detection is done by immunofluorescence studies and nucleic acid detection is done by molecular testing that is polymerase chain reaction or RT. PCR. Virus isolation is the most definitive method of diagnosis of virus encephalitis, but virus encephalitis or encephalitis caused by other organisms also. But it is not a very sensitive method for diagnosis of viral encephalitis. The only viruses which are commonly isolated from uh, CSF are HSV and enteroviruses. For isolation of arboviruses like Japanese encephalitis virus, insect cell line like Aedes albopictus C636 is used. Use of shell culture technique can increase or enhance the sensitivity of the isolation of virus. Now let us see the pathogen specific test for diagnosis of encephalitis. So for diagnosis of Japanese encephalitis virus, West Nile virus, dengue and chikungunya encephalitis, the tests which are commonly carried out are IgM antibody in CSF or serum using MAC ELISA that is IgM antibody capture ELISA. This is the most commonly used test for diagnosis of Japanese encephalitis virus. The other techniques which can be used for diagnosis of these viruses are virus isolation and detection of viral RNA by PCR in CSF or in serum. The enteroviruses can be diagnosed by isolation of virus from CSF, detection of viral RNA by RT-PCR from skin vesicles in case of Coxsackie viruses, then throat swabs and rectal swabs and fecal specimen can be used for uh, demonstration of virus by RNA RT-PCR. For diagnosis of paramyxo and uh, orthomyxo viruses that is mumps, measles, Nipah and influenza, the antibody demonstration can be done by ELISA test. The, these viruses can be isolated in culture. The other tests which are used are serum neutralization test and RT-PCR. For diagnosis of Chandipura virus, detection of viral RNA by RT-PCR in serum or CSF or demonstration of IgM antibodies in serum by ELISA test. For demonstration of or for diagnosis of rabies virus encephalitis, the viral RNA can be detected by RT-PCR in CSF, saliva, nuchal skin biopsy or neutralizing antibodies can be demonstrated in CSF and serum. Antigen detection in brain tissue can be done by fluorescent antibody test. Herpes simplex virus 1 and 2 and other herpes viruses they can be diagnosed by polymerase chain reaction on CSF, virus isolation 
and antigen detection. For bacterial pathogens causing meningitis and encephalitis that is meningoencephalitis, the various tests used are a gram stain on CSF, CSF culture and latex agglutination test for demonstration of various antigens. For diagnosis of CNS involvement in scrub typhus, detection of IgM antibodies done in serum. Well felix test though not very sensitive can be done on serum sample. The PCR on blood or Ishihar material can be used for diagnosis of scrub typhus CNS involvement. For diagnosis of mycobacterium tuberculosis meningitis and encephalitis, CSF Zeal Nielsen stain and culture is done for acid fast or mycobacterium tuberculosis or molecular test like polymerase chain reaction can be carried out. For diagnosis of plasmodium falciparum uh, malaria, cerebral malaria, demonstration of asexual forms of plasmodium falciparum can be done in peripheral blood smear and rapid test for antigen detection of plasmodium falciparum can be carried out or polymerase chain reaction can be done. Now coming to management of encephalitis. Now there is no specific treatment available for most of the cases of encephalitis caused by viruses. The bacterial and fungal cases of encephalitis can be treated with specific antibacterial and antifungal agent. Empirical use of acyclovir can be done to treat possible HSV encephalitis till the diagnostic evaluation is completed. Antiviral treatment is indicated for other herpes viruses also. Antiviral treatment is indicated if influenza encephalitis is also suspected. However, currently no therapy is available for any herbovirus encephalitis. For prevention of encephalitis, routine vaccination for common pathogens is done and vaccination is also available for Japanese encephalitis. And the second approach for prevention is procedure to decrease exposure to mosquito bites. So for control of Japanese encephalitis, vaccines are available, three types of vaccines are currently available. One is mouse brain derived inactivated vaccine which uses Beijing and Nakayama strains of Japanese encephalitis virus. Second is culture derived inactivated vaccine which uses Beijing P3 strain and third is culture derived attenuated vaccine which uses SA141412 strain. Now this type of vaccine is commonly used for immunization in India. So it is a part of universal immunization program in districts uh, which are endemic for Japanese encephalitis virus. So for this vaccine single dose is used which is followed by booster at, inter, at the interval of one year. And another method of control of Japanese encephalitis is vector control. So various methods of mosquito control are employed for control of Japanese encephalitis virus. So to summarize, encephalitis is a worldwide health problem due to very high mortality associated with this condition. Viruses are the most common cause of encephalitis and herboviruses are the important causes of encephalitis worldwide. Japanese encephalitis is the leading cause of encephalitis in India. Other viruses like Chandipura virus, Nipah and West Nile virus are known to cause outbreaks in India. Laboratory diagnosis is required to identify the causative agent and to take the measures to control the outbreaks. Vaccination and vector control measures are recommended for control of Japanese encephalitis virus. These are the references which are used for the preparation of this material and also they are recommended for the further reading. Thank you.